Hey Cowboys and welcome to another edition of The Daily O. I'm Sapphire Cervantes. And I'm Cameron Bloom. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the weather. It's been pretty rainy today, but not too cold with a high of 69, but a low of 37. So be sure to get your jackets out for tonight. And the rain is only going to get worse. It's going to be a great night to curl up with a warm blanket and some hot chocolate. I hope you're getting me some, Cameron. <laughs> Stillwater City Council, Stillwater Utilities Authority, and Stillwater Economic Development Authority met for their regular meetings on November 4th. If you missed Monday's meetings, here are some highlights from each meeting. Stillwater City Council approved recommendations for improvements to Western Road and Hall of Fame from 6th Avenue to Monroe Street. Stillwater Utilities Authority approved a wastewater treatment plant purchase, Wonderware software, at a cost of $16,000. $174. There's also a software maintenance agreement for an additional $7,258. Stillwater Economic Development Authority appointed the Tourism Advisory Committee. They will be appointing three citizen positions by the November 18th meeting. It's International Games Week and Edmund Lowe is putting on an event to celebrate. Last night, they had an assortment of classics and new tabletop games for students to play in the browsing room. Along with the games, they even had a Harry Potter escape room. Wow, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. Well, if you're interested in going, the event is happening again tonight at Edmund Lowe from 5 to 9 p.m. I just might have to go and check it out, Cameron. I don't know about you, but I'm all about being eco-friendly. And last night in the village courtyards, there was an event where you could bring in your old t-shirts to make them into reusable shopping bags. Our very own ba Brock Baldridge has more. At Oklahoma State, there's an opportunity to become eco-friendly. Last Tuesday night from 6 to 8 o'clock, located at the Village Courtyards, Swag Bags was an event that offers residents a chance of making reusable shopping bags out of old t-shirts. The reason for this event was to raise awareness for eco-sustainability efforts, whether that is using reusable cups, remembering to turn off the lights, and not to waste water. Students were given the ability to check in and to enter a prize-winning contest explaining how they can help the environment. Participants were offered pumpkin cookies and environmentally friendly pens and notebooks. With the help of eco-representatives, this will help Oklahoma State go green. For The Daily O, I'm Brock Baldridge. Wow, what a cool event. Maybe I should take some of my old t-shirts there and see if I can make some shopping bags out of them. Yeah, it'd be a great little craft and a good way to help the environment. Speaking of caring for the environment, our community has made notable progress concerning recyclable, recycling contamination, but Stillwater is facing another issue similar to most cities across the U.S., a lack of market for its recyclables. Our very own Mally Jones tell us what the city is doing about it. Is it worth it? That is the question all over the country. Many recyclables, such as cardboard, plastic, and glass, are no longer profitable or able to be processed cost-effectively. But Stillwater is not throwing in the towel. With everything that's going on, we really think it's a good time to really stop, evaluate the whole program. The U.S. has an overabundance of material, causing its value to drop. Knight said that about four years ago, cardboard was worth nearly $150 to $180 per ton. Today, that number is down to $30 per ton. That barely pays for the time and labor spent collecting, sorting, and transporting the material. The city is re-evaluating its recycling program to figure out the best options. As a part of this, the city has adopted a new citizens task force. I'm very excited for the committee uh, because it is going to bring people from different backgrounds, um, residents of Stillwater, um, and you know experts. Approximately 9,000 households in Stillwater participate in the recycling program. This committee is made up of 30 Stillwater citizens. They are going to evaluate the current program and see what to do moving forward. A lot of ideas I don't even know, to be honest with you. The, this is what this task force is going to be coming up some ideas, you know, and we'll start exploring those ideas. The goal is to find out what the citizens want for the new recycling program. Then they need to figure out what that would cost and if citizens would be willing to pay that. As a community, we've came a long ways and we really have it's really amazing to me that the amount of people who want to recycle in City Stillwater and really want to do it right. 
The city is asking for residents to focus on what they are putting in the recycling bins and to give your input on speakup.stillwater.org. For The Daily O, I'm Mally Jones. Thanks, Mally. I'm so glad our city is working hard to recycle. Moving on, Oklahoma State campus is quite a bit more diverse than you might think. Our own Kristen Cowan has more. College is a time to make lifelong friends, earn a degree, and get the training you need to be successful in your field. Diversity is an important part of the college experience because it exposes students to others with different cultural, religious, and economic backgrounds. Students come from all over the world to get their degree from Oklahoma State University, and because of this, OSU prides itself on being a diverse campus. Of the 25,600 students currently enrolled, 1,800 are international students. Each of these students faces unique challenges that local students don't have. International students often have to adapt to a new culture, language, customs, and people, as well as having to make new friends and deal with the normal stress college causes. One big struggle for international students is others understanding them through their accents. Others struggle with less manageable things like the vast differences from the weather at home. For many, there was a distinct difference between how the U.S. was depicted on TV at home and what Oklahoma is like. Despite Oklahoma's differences, OSU provides an exceptional education and has around 250 different majors, many of which cannot be found at other universities. Oklahoma State University is a place where people come to learn, and there's no better way to learn about the world than through interacting with its people. Diversity is one of OSU's biggest strengths and should be highlighted and celebrated. For The Daily O, I'm Kirsten Cowan, and from Cowboys all across the world, go Pokes! Last night, Allied Arts presented the first ever student production of Shakespeare on the Lawn. Students perform the classic A Midsummer Night's Dream. Tune into the show tomorrow night to see a full recap of that performance by our own Daily O reporter, Chase Coggleton. This week is College of Arts and Science Week, also known as CAS Week at OSU. Yesterday was Faculty Appreciation Day and gifts were delivered to departments throughout the day. Today there will be CAS Bingo in Murray, in Murray Parlor, which was from 2 to 4 actually. And tomorrow, be sure to stop by Kyle Clock and grab some free CAS stickers. And then on Friday, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., stop by Kyle Clock again for some free hot cocoa. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we get back, we'll have sports.
Welcome back. Let's get into sports. Last night, Oklahoma State got a big win in basketball. The number two overall ranked player in the 2020 class, Cade Cunningham, announced his commitment to Oklahoma State. Cunningham's brother, Cannon, took on assistant assistant coaching position here at OSU several months ago. But Cunningham said that was not the deciding factor for him, and he still kept his options open. The five-star point guard received offers from Kentucky, North Carolina, Florida, Washington, and more. But in a video posted to Twitter last night, he announced that he chose Oklahoma State. I loved all the schools I visited, and I appreciate each program investing their time and energy into me. To be honest, I was this close to picking a different school. But blood is always sticking in the water. Go Pokes. You know, Cameron, I really can't wait to watch that man play in Gallagher Iba. He's going to be a great addition to the team. I had my notifications on for Twitter to see what he was going to say. And honestly, a tear formed in my eye when I watched that video. I started, I was so excited, I started crying. I'm very excited. I saw some highlight videos on Twitter of him. And listen to this, he already has a gold medal with the USA Basketball U19 national team. And like you said earlier, he had offers from UNC, Florida, Kentucky. Those are some schools that are pretty good at basketball. Oh, yeah. And they, he happened to chose us. He is our first five-star recruit, listen this, since Marcus Smart. Mm-hmm. He I'm is excited. definitely going to make big moves here at Oklahoma State, and the program's just going to get better. I'm very excited. Now, into OSU football. The Cowboys had a big win over TCU last weekend, and Daily O reporter Alex Dusky heard from Mike Gundy about the game and about how the team is using this week's bye week to prepare for their upcoming game against Kansas. The Oklahoma State Cowboys are going into their bye week with a big win over TCU, 34-27. This is the Cowboys' second win in a row and their sixth win overall, making the team bowl eligible. This helps in building the team's confidence going into the last three games, but they can't forget to work hard and finish the season strong. It always helps to win, and we, you know, we talked about that and had a discussion with them on Sunday that um, you know, they, were, they were successful and everybody's excited, we've got to go back to work. Not only was the TCU game great for the team, but star running back Chuba Hubbard had an amazing game. Hubbard had 20 attempts with 223 total yards, averaging 11.2 yards per carry. Hubbard has been in the running for the Heisman for several weeks in a row, but this game brought him newfound attention. I think that he's laid the groundwork himself. And, uh, you know, as Mr. Pickens used to say, you don't want to look in the bag yet and see what's in there, so I don't <laughs> want to do that. But uh, I don't think we have to do much promoting him at all. I think the country's pretty aware of how impressive he is and what kind of year he's had. Another player who had a great game was wide receiver Dylan Stoner. Due to Tylen Wallace's season-ending ACL injury, other players had to step up and fill the star receiver's position. Stoner willingly stepped up in practice last week and proved himself against TCU. He's just a kind of a jack of all trades for us, and he loves to play the game, and uh, he's willing to accept that role. I mean, he, he would love to have more put on him, so uh, he's a good part of the team. Coming out of their bye week, the Cowboys will face off against the Kansas Jayhawks at home. Coach Gundy will see a familiar face on the opposing team's sideline, head coach Les Miles. Gundy was the offensive coordinator under Miles from 2001 to 2004 before Miles went to LSU and Gundy took the head coaching position here. But yeah, he, you know, and Les played a, a big role in, in, uh, in my career, you know, in, in offensive football and things that I've learned. And we do a lot of the stuff that, that he taught me today. The Cowboys are using this bye week to train some younger players and keep the starters healthy. Hopefully they can use this extra practice time to end the season with a bang. For The Daily O, I'm Alex Dusky. Thanks, Alex. Man, I love seeing his mullet. <laughs> I mean, if I could grow one, I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> From OSU football to the NFL, let's go to our weekly fantasy football roundup with Mackenzie Cokert. Hello, I'm Mackenzie Coker, and welcome back to the fantasy football roundup. Let's kick off with this week's top performers. Week 9 treated the Seahawks QB wide receiver duo of MVP candidate Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett. Wilson was the highest scorer at 39.2 points thanks to a 378 yard and 5 touchdown performance. Lockett benefited the most from Wilson's dominance who caught two of those touchdowns and had 152 receiving yards which made him the third best performer at 27.2 points. The third impact player was Jimmy Garoppolo. 
He helped keep the 49ers undefeated with a 317 yard and four touchdown game in a win against Arizona last Thursday, earning him 28.9 points. Now onto the worst performers. A few elite receivers had trouble in week nine, headlines by Stefan Diggs. Diggs had a, has had a career stretch the last three weeks, but came crashing down to earth last week, getting only one catch and a total of 16 yards. That gave him 1.6 points, which was the same amount as Juju Smith-Schuster. The Steelers were able to beat the Colts, but Juju had 16 receiving yards thanks to Mason relying on Jalen Samuels to catch most of his passes. Now I save the best for last. The last and probably biggest disappointment all year is Bears quarterback Mitch Trubisky. Poor Mitch looks like he forgot how to throw a football since the season started and it didn't change this week. Trubisky had a horrible first half with the offense having 9 yards at halftime, but he at least recovered to get 125 yards and 6.5 and points. Now it's time for the weekly waiver wire. The Steelers have some running back health issues, so Trey Edmonds is getting his chance. Edmonds reached 73 yards and 7.3 points last week and has under a 2% own rate, so he will almost certainly be available as an emergency add. Next is Dolphins tight end Mike Gesicki. The rookie from Penn State had a good week, 9 with 95 yards and almost 10 points. He could be a reliable target for one of the two Dolphin QBs and also could be an emergency add. The last player I want to talk about is Colts White wide out Zach Pascal. Pascal had the best game of his career this week, having 76 yards and a touchdown in the absence of T.Y. Hilton, and that might allow for him to continue to get more targets. Averaging over seven points per week, he can be a reliable flex option. That's all for this week's Fantasy Football Roundup. Tune in next Wednesday for Week 10's big performances, the weekly waiver wire, and more. For The Daily O, I'm Mackenzie Coker. See you next week. Thanks, McKenzie. And speaking of the NFL, a quick shout out to defensive end of the Kansas City Chiefs, Emmanuel Ogba. Happy 26th birthday, my friend. I heard you got to talk to Boo, the Oklahoma oh, yeah. State Cowboy wrestler, on his comeback. Oh, yeah. He's totally looking forward to this season. All right. Well, let's check that out. In one moment, the roars of fans went silent, and the future of Oklahoma State wrestler Boo Llewellyn was unknown. The Oklahoma State Wrestling's duel against Iowa State left Llewellyn broken and an immense amount of pain. The shoulder injury he suffered at his first duel of the 2018 season followed him to Iowa and became worse. The biggest thing was, you know, is there something that's going to be able to, to fully fix this problem? You know, uh, I've wrestled since I was five years old, so I'm going on 18 years. Llewellyn's recovery put him through tests, both mentally and physically. His long-term girlfriend, McKenna Sokolowski, was by his side throughout the whole process. He definitely, you know, was just heartbroken to me, and he kind of was just lost there for a while, and uh, he just didn't have any direction. Uh, he thought, you know, it was kind of all over. However, it was McKenna's tough love that brought Llewellyn back to reality. She started researching workouts that would help him strengthen his shoulder and dedicated a majority of her days to his recovery. Fortunate for, for my girlfriend, uh, McKenna, she helped me out a lot of just, just keeping me straight. Because of Llewellyn's shoulder injury, he was forced to watch from the sidelines, but now he's back and ready to hit the mat here in gallagher Iba Arena. I want to be a national champion. I'm ready for the tough fights, but I know what I'm capable of, and I'm really excited to display my abilities this year. Llewellyn's teammate and friend, Nick Piccinini, said he believes Llewellyn deserves nothing less than a title. I knew, um, even though, you know, something as traumatic as him, you know, getting a shoulder surgery, I, I knew he'd come back strong and, and uh, you know, stay on the right path and build his dreams and goals. Heading into this season, the only thing on Llewellyn's mind is getting his national title. Thanks so much, Sapphire. That was a great story. You know, I had a lot of fun filming that. So now we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we get back, we'll take a closer look at the weather.
Welcome back. If you missed the top of the show, we talked about some ways to be eco-friendly, the Stillwater City Council, and more. And in sports, we talked about OSU basketball's newest recruit, Cade Cunningham, fantasy football, and how one OSU wrestler is making his comeback this season. Now, looking ahead at our weekly forecast, highs and lows. All right, well, today it was a high of 67 and a low of 30, 36, and you can hear it pouring outside. So I bet you it's just going to get colder as the night goes oh, by. Yes. Tomorrow we have a high of 44 and a low of 27. That's pretty chilly. Friday, I have a high of 55 and a low of 36. Saturday, a high of 68 and a low of 45. Sunday, we get all the way up to 69 with a low of 36. And Monday, it is going to be cold with a high of 38 and a low of 37. Hopefully, you are dropping your, dripping your water faucets. You don't want those pipes to freeze. Man, I am ready for cold weather. No. I'm so ready for it. No, not at all. <laughs> not ready. Haven't even been winter shopping yet. Tragedy. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to our show today. Make sure you're also checking us out on Instagram and Twitter at the Daily O underscore TV. I'm Sapphire Cervantes. You can also watch us on Suddenlink Channel 112, Roku, Ab Amazon Fire Stick, and Apple TV. For the Daily O, I'm Cameron Bloom. I'm T. Johnson. See me this Friday on The Daily O.